you can't be taking life out of the world at the same time you're bringing life in the world and say, this is normal. It's Brian here, and we are on our second day here in Cleveland, Ohio. And in this episode, we have a chance to talk with some pro-life OBGYNs and pro-life medical professionals. What better way to support families and support women is through a 100% pro-life OBGYN office and medical center. Uh, we had a chance today to see one of the prime examples of how you can do this throughout the country. Uh, we sat down with three of those people here in Cleveland, Ohio. And so we were pleased and honored to be with them today. In this episode, we'll find out whether or not you need an abortion to save a mother's life. Thanks for being here on the Pro-Life Tour. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support our work at coalitionlife.com. My name is Matthew Muller, and I'm on the board of directors for Veranova Health, and I'm excited to be on the Pro-Life Tour. We opened in 2023 in January, and we are an independent medical practice providing life-affirming care for women and families. We do obstetrics, gynecology, family medicine, physical therapy, cycle education for young girls before they reach the menstrual age, and we also take care of older women in the postpartum and perimenopause. So we're a full-scale medical practice. This used to be an actually an oral surgery office, and so a lot of us board members and volunteers did the volunteer work to tear out some dentist chairs, and to we got rid of some x-ray equipment, added a new restroom. We did hire a contractor to remodel this back in 2023. On some days we have counseling in here, small meetings. It's got a nice natural theme. We are a Christian-based practice, but we wanna be open to everyone. We don't wanna waste the good things God has given us. We found a building that has a really good infrastructure. We just added a wall here and there, changed an x-ray room into a bathroom, and now we have you know cabinets that are Dentists wear exam gloves, OBGYN doctors wear exam gloves. Why not just use the same cabinets and save that money? I'm Mary Ellen Jacob Bison. I'm with Veranova Health, and I'm excited to be on the pro-life tour. When my husband and I were engaged, he told me that he wanted to practice natural family planning. The idea of natural family planning was scary. So I wanted to look into it. I was willing to, to investigate. So we took a class and and I realized at that point, this is good for a relationship. We really loved it. And he said right away, we should teach this. So I had to prove that we could use it to postpone pregnancy and then use it. To, and then I thought, well, what if I'm just infertile? So then I had to prove that we could get pregnant. So we started teaching NFP, you know, when our first baby was about six months old. Just teaching NFP wasn't enough. We wanted to expand that by helping them to also find that medical care that they needed. I am Carolyn J. Lenz Tucker. I'm a nurse practitioner with Veranova Health and I'm excited to be on the pro-life tour. How has the medical establishment made it harder for physicians to practice the way you're, you're practicing? There is so much the devil's working against with us. Um, we see it in a lot of different ways. We see it in the constant questioning of pharmacists, why are you using natural progesterone? Uh, to insurance companies, we're not gonna cover it. Uh, to fellow physicians, suggesting that it's gonna cause problems and um, making complaints to higher ups that natural progesterone that we use or any kind of the treatment that we use to treat our patients um, is non-medical, non-necessary, or even harmful to them. But the natural progesterone on the market um, mimics the natural progesterone our body makes. We call it bioidentical. And so when we put it in our body, our body uses it just like it uses the progesterone that we make. Artificial progestogens are a chemical. Originally, they were made to think that it would just be a more potent progesterone. And so they were used that way in the beginning, way back in the 60s. And then they found out that they were actually binding in not just progesterone receptor sites. Estrogen is a normal stimulant and a growth factor. And so when artificial progestogens bind in estradiol sites, it turns on the growth factor part of that uh, binding and causes 
extraneous growth. When you do that over a long period of time, it naturally automatically kicks on that growth factor, so now it starts functioning by itself. And this is where cancers begin. But we have had a couple of other stories of women who have had years of infertility, um, a few who have had failed IVF attempts, who've come to Carolyn now, and Carolyn has helped them um, balance their hormones, addressed the issues that they've been dealing their uh, health issues, and have now been able to get pregnant. And um, so, that's, that's a great joy. So, it sounds like church teaching, while it's morally correct, but it's also um, physically correct and biologically correct. Yes. yes. So yes. tell me that connection. Why, <laughs> why does it sound like God created us perfectly? <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and that's the beauty of it. Because, and, and I think that's um, one of the things that we, we really felt was important when we created Veranova. Um, you know, when even we created the name Veranova, we made that up like a, a new truth. Okay, and the idea that the Nova is is a, a new star, and and um, that that we wanted people to be drawn in our minds. Okay, they're drawn to the light of Christ, but really they're drawn to the truth. And and we were excited, like when we found this building, and here's this window, and we wanted to find a star. We wanted people when they see this place, they're drawn to this. Star. They're drawn to the light of Christ, but they're really drawn to a, a new truth. Truth is truth, and and that's that's what it is. The way He made our bodies to work, it's got to be the right thing. He, he wouldn't make a mistake. Also, why we have this focus on education, because if a woman can know she was made good, her cycles have a purpose. This is a good thing. You were made beautifully for a reason. It all works just how it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, then you could get medical help to make sure it does work right. Helping people with infertility, natural family planning, and some of the fi family care that you do, how is a medical practice somehow helping to end abortion or helping to build a culture of life? Okay, it, there is a direct connection because when a couple has been contracepting, okay, they have been able to separate the gift of life from their actions. They've been able to separate consequences of their actions. Because they have contraception, they could continue in this action even without being willing to accept life by promoting natural methods, fertility awareness-based methods, and promoting a different approach to infertility. You are helping people to recognize the connection between their actions and the consequences. And that's the only way that people would, will understand that abortion is a consequence of their actions and help them to take responsibility for that. We talked with a, a woman in Massachusetts who was a doula. But the problem in Boston is crazy. So there's multiple abortion facilities, but they're all hospitals. So she said she was with a patient and the doctor walks into the room and takes off their gloves and says, hey, I just want to introduce myself. I'll be back in a few minutes. I have to finish out an abortion in the next room. When I'm finished with that, I'll come back here and I'll help you deliver. How could a medical professional do an abortion and then immediately come and deliver a live child? What's, the, like, what's going on with our culture that that could be even conceived? They lost their way. There is no faith. There is no belief in God. <laughs> and sure enough, money's at the root of all evil and that's what propels them. And you have to believe that that's what's going on because I cannot believe that a person that's educated in science would naturally go, this is okay. You know, yeah. you, you can't be taking life out of the world at the same time you're bringing life in the world and say, this is normal. No, I mean, we're told it's just a clump of tissue. So is it a, just a clump of tissue? Oh my heavens, you didn't see the little lady I did an ultrasound on this morning, did you? <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> 11 weeks and there's that little baby waving at me. She literally was waving in the ultrasound. Yeah, it's fantastic. And you know, we, I can do ultrasounds here at this clinic as early as, well, I can do them as early as I want. 
but as early as six weeks and get a heartbeat. Now it's still a fetal pulse, so the body is still forming, but that heart's there and it's beating and I can get a number. 189 beats a minute, 120 beats a minute, doesn't matter, I can get a heartbeat. And that's at six weeks. Politicians are saying to save the life of the mother, we need abortion. So what do you say that? There is never a situation where we have to abort a, children, a child to be able to save a mother. There is always an alternative, always. They're talking about finding more ways to abort babies, is my opinion. And that's all there is to it. I mean, modern science can save a baby at 20 weeks. And if anything is going on contrary to normal development in human life, um, life takes care of it. Now, is there instances in history where women have died because of complications in pregnancy? And the answer is yes, they have. Most of those we've been able to overcome in medicine. So we can treat almost any problem that's gonna come her way and keep her and baby safe and healthy. Has there been a situation in my long, over 30 years worth of medicine where a baby had to die to save a mother? Never. We're excited that you are here on this journey with us. So continue to like, comment, subscribe, share with all of your friends, support this journey. We'll see you next time on ProLifeTour.com.